Hoople's cap. Radiation effects on people, plants and animals and fishy wishes. So I did a bit of research in addition to the book and I came up with some interesting little factoids so I'm just going to kind of throw them out there and put up some random slides and hopefully entertain you all. Okay, so this is brainless, but younger plants, younger animals, faster growing plants, faster growing uh, animals are more susceptible to die from radiation at lower levels. Go figure. This is why I keep saying if you have uh, KFOS uh, tablets, I die tablets, you really, really need to look at how to give them, and they can give them to babies and infants. They're going to be way more susceptible than me. I'll get thyroid cancer if I live 25 years after a nuclear war. Uh, I probably won't live 25 years after a nuclear war. But an 8-year-old or an 18-year-old, hopefully they might. All right, so this is kind of interesting. This is from a, an old British radiation journal aimed at farmers. Uh, is that the hazard of radiation from a nuclear war has been discounted for home defence planning purposes. Saying that, uh, it talks about uh, some of the elements will live for a quarter of a million years. It talks about the effects on food and water and on livestock. Uh, and it's interesting because it actually uses the, the heat blast, radiation, climatic and ecological changes on the effects of livestock. And this is all estimation and it's from the United Kingdom. 28% of dairy cows, 12% of beef cow, 5% of sheep will die from the effects of fire alone. Blast and fire. Fuel depots will be hit and virtually all stocks of petrol, gasoline and diesel fuel will be destroyed, causing serious difficulties for farmers to maintain modern agricultural practices. I think we all know that and in Threads, the awesome film you really need to see from England from the 80s, that was pretty much shown. Blast. Blasts were also killed by blowing humans and animals off their feet and dashing them to the ground. Flying debris will also cause further ha havoc. The blasts will dislocate all main services. Hydroelectric, water, gas, telephone, poof, gone. Cell towers. Blasts will destroy cell towers reasonably easily. Um, so there will be any war, etc. This is what I can, this is what gets kind of interesting. Animals or humans on a clear day will be blind permanently. Uh, up to 32 miles away from a 1 megaton explosion if they look at it. Now the megaton explosion range will be 1 to 5 megaton. Even if you're not looking at the light source, if you're within 13 miles of the explosion of a 1 megaton blast, you will have a severe painful flash blindness for at least several minutes. All animals and birds will, and domestic pets and wildlife will be exposed to this. You may have a lot of blind pigs, right? Except pigs are now kept in boxes, so they'll be alright I guess. So then you have the fallout, and the fallout gets blown around, it gets washed into the soil, into the plants by the rain, and you can't tell what's safe and what isn't safe unless you have a guide camera, and you kind of need that. They suggest uh, petting your animals in as much protection as you can, and if you have time, remember your priority is going to be you. Uh, you're going to have trash bags filled with soil before the explosion, hopefully. Uh, you should do the same for your pets and for your wildlife, and then seal the building as well as you can. Uh, so outside dust doesn't get in it. But pigs uh, are much less susceptible to the effects of radiation than horses and poultry, which I think is more interesting. So he, realistically speaking, um, what you're looking at here is the fact that your chickens are going to be much safer than any other animal uh, exposed to higher radiation. Now they're still going to accumulate the radiation and pass it on to you, which isn't great news, is it, really? But what's going to survive? What food crops are going to survive? The least likely to survive a nuclear war is going to be the broad bean. Um, very little radiation for a short period or a long period will actually make the broad bean sterile and fail. So one of the things you might wish to do is to look at the list, and I'll put it up again, and it's a slide so you'll see both slides, you'll see livestock, is you want to store broad beans, peas, barley for sure in metal containers and keep them from being planted for five, maybe ten years if you can manage that along. Give them a chance to have lower radiation environment before you try to germinate those seeds. Whereas your rice and your tomatoes and your potatoes and your sugar beets, they're a lot hardier. So you can they'll be the first crops that you'd put into the ground. Now again, bear it in mind, they're gonna soak up radiation. So that puts you in a bit of a bind. 
but at least there is some food. You could barter it if you're not sure about it. Bearing in mind when this is written, Britain was a socialist country, it believed in the collective welfare of all, rather than allowing elites to make billions of dollars. The Ministry of Agriculture will appoint farm wardens who, if they survive, will each run units of 20 farms under the supervision of an area officer. They will decide which stock are to be kept, slaughtered or moved compulsory to other areas for restocking. Preservation orders are allowed to be placed on healthy female sheep and cattle, leading to a male-only slaughter policy for those species. Now this all makes scientific sense. So even if you're in America or Canada for some reason, there's nuclear war, for some reason the local uh, government doesn't survive and doesn't impose this sort of restriction on you, it's the sort of restriction you need to think about. Kill the seriously affected animals from blast or heat or radiation as fast as you can and then store them and eat them. Um, no electricity, no slaughterhouses, no coal stores, so we'll have plans for that. You need a lot of salt and you probably, according to this, won't have anywhere near enough salt, however much you prep. So they've estimated a full-scale attack on Great Britain at harvest time. Over 70% of the corn crops are gone from fire alone. <laughs> Heat, fire. And the blast damage would cause even more. So there's almost, at harvest time, in a small country like the United Kingdom, there's probably there's going to be no cereal crops there, even for the first harvest. They figured that forest fires alone will destroy 400,000 square miles of Northern Hemisphere. This area will be equivalent to Sweden, Norway and Denmark. So again, then we start getting into nuclear winter time as well, which this doesn't really mention too much. Uh, it does mention the fact that fertilizers will not be available. So even if the crops are fine, uh, yields will drop by at least 50% in the United Kingdom without fertilizer. It also points out that insects, fungi, bacteria and weeds are relatively resistant to radiation and blast damage. So without pesticides, fungicides and weed killers, they will survive and push out selectively uh, what cereal crops grow, which is kind of sad. It points out again, and this was pointed out in the other book, that most of the work has been done, and I'll put a slide up, most of the work has been done on gamma radiation in labs. So bitter radiation is harder to work with in a lab. So is alpha. Alpha can be brushed off, washed off if you have sufficient clean water, and you should be doing that early on if you can, and you can do it protectedly. Again, I'm going to be in a bunker for three months, so it's when I get above the ground. However, this is where it gets really frightening. If wheat seedlings are exposed to fallout, they would receive a combined dose of beta and gamma radiations that is equivalent to 20 to 40 times greater than the gamma radiation dose alone. They assume here it will at least cause double the severity that they previously thought would happen to germination and mutation of plants and animals. Uh, very, very frightening. If it's early on in the growing season and the animals that it's, and the plants are in its uh, growing stage, you'll probably have no flower, flower tips, so they won't germinate at all. It'll be like zero germination. <sighs> An attack in the spring when plants are young and vulnerable and there is no second chance to redrill and replant could result in a total crop loss, especially in areas of high contamination. So if you figure out where California is, you figure out where the uh, armed forces bases are in the United States of America, we could be looking at a total crop loss across the Midwest and California. In addition to the massive and complete human loss of a nuclear war, this will be ongoing for the survivors. Now an attack in mid-season still will result in heavy plant loss, although the plants may still stand but the radiation levels will be too high for them to be harvested by the time it comes to harvest and delays will also result in crop uh, crops collapsing and stuff like that and again gasoline is going to be in labour and safe labour is going to be a huge huge issue so I do foresee uh, in a limited or even a full scale nuclear war local authorities in agricultural areas recruiting to put a nice word on it all available labour for minimum food and water which will probably be contaminated to make them harvest and weed. Basically sharecropping won't exist, it will be back to slavery. If you stagger out of the cities and you're not blind and burned and about to die from radiation, you're probably going to get taken by a local farmer or a farm cooperative or a local municipality, whoever's surviving, you're going to be locked up in a shed and you're going to be used like a slave until you finally die, which won't be very long. Now, 
Plant species, like animal species, can vary up to 100 times in their sensitivity to radiation. So just because it seems similar, it is not. And I think that's a really important point for us to take on board. So after about two months after Chernobyl, most of the radiation had fallen to the ground. It was now in the upper three to five centimetres of the soil and leaf debris. And it remained there for an awful long time. So that's something you've really got to take involved. You've got to be very, very careful with it. I would suggest getting this document. Uh, it is available online uh, if you're interested in this stuff. I don't want to get too, too, too much into it. For all they say that Chernobyl was a wonderful place because of this, um, it wasn't. Uh, the number of species plummeted and has remained low. Now, four months after the accident, in the 10 kilometer exclusion zone around Chernobyl, 50 species of birds were found and they had some real ones and they all appeared normal and they had no uh, dead birds were found. 45 species of mammals from six orders were observed and no unusual experience, appearances or behaviours were noted. Small rodents were all over the spot and they were highly contaminated. Uh, reabsorption of embryos occurred and that will occur in human beings much before it happens in rats. And it talks quite a bit about this, and I think it is kind of frightening. Um, if you're going to eat fish, try not to eat carnivorous fish. The dose rates between carnivorous fish and non-carnivorous fish were incredibly different by a huge order. And the bottom-dwelling fish, like goldfish, silver bream, and all those, and bream and carp, uh, and I guess catfish in parts of the States, had massive irradiation. Doses of 10 grays, not something you want to mess around with. It talks about various other things, uh, weak German effects on that. So in the affected zones, pine trees bore no seeds for a five to seven year period. Now there was the lethal zone that killed all the pine trees, the sublethal zones that didn't kill them, just damaged them. They had no seeds for five to seven years. So if you're like me and you're relying on seeds for most of your fats in the year two, three, you might be in for a bit of a surprise. So that's something I'm going to have to look at more and more is try to figure this out. I am expecting a nuclear war to have a nuclear winter. So I think one of the things I would do is actually increase my stocks of coconut oil and uh, freeze it outdoors. One of the animal species that's done really well in the exclusion zone of Chernobyl is beaver. Beavers boomed, so that's good news for us Canucks. Um, however, they keep saying it's probably because of the fact that humans are out there rather than any resistance to the radiation. And the mere presence of humans in the biosphere causes disturbance, which I think is very true. Now this is one that's interesting. 20 years later, radiation levels have dropped to 1% of the original level due to radionuclide decay and deeper migration of radionuclides into the soil. 20 years later, the next generation that's born, when they hit adulthood, they're going to be exposed to 1% of the radiation actually dropped in the first uh, few weeks of the nuclear war. Uh, it's going to be a long-lasting effect. So save the best to last. Assuming we do not, as a human species, get a lethal dose all across the planet and we all die off, there will be humans left, and humans tend to breed. The major effect that you're going to see in the communities is thyroid cancer in young adolescents, which will be terminal. There will be no chemotherapy or surgery. The other major effect you're going to see is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is strongly correlated to two things, background radiation and the age of the mom. I'm guessing people will be breeding very early on and it will be back to what it used to be. It will be barefoot and pregnant at 12 and dead at 22. Um, I personally will do my best to struggle against that sort of retrograde behaviour, but I, I can see why it would happen. So the frequency of Down syndrome in India is one in every 1,215 births. The Kerala province it is 0.93% in every thousand, so almost one in a thousand. Uh, they don't know why, because you can't do a controlled study, but it's pr due to primary trisomy. Down syndrome increases the age of the mother. So the highest frequency in Kerala province 
is in women in the age group 30 to 40, whereas 1 in 81. The background radiation in Kerala province is really high from natural causation. In a nuclear war, it's going to be higher. So if you are breeding as a female beyond the age of 80, beyond the age of 30, you will see a really, really high spike in Down syndrome in a society that can't feed itself anyway. I'm optimistic about you know because there's no dead birds, there's a lot of species of birds there, but basically dead birds have been eaten by the predators who weren't being threatened by humans anymore, or other predators, and they flew in. What happened um, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was that up to 40% of male birds were totally sterile. No sperm, or just a few dead sperm in their reproductive tracts during the breeding system. Birds and mammals at Chernobyl had cataracts in their eyes and smaller brains. In Chernobyl, all major groups of animals that we surveyed were less abundant in more radioactive areas. All. Birds, butterflies, dragonflies, bees, grasshoppers, spiders and large and small mammals. All. Not. Wolves showed no effects of radiation whatsoever on their population density. It's because they have fewer competitors. What about Fukushima, right? Uh, leaving aside the strident psychotic nonsense that you see online about Fukushima ending the planet, even though there was a lot less uh, radiation release than there was at Chernobyl, uh, they found that the UN so far has found similar patterns of decreasing abundancy and decreasing diversity in some species and a higher abundancy in others. also found effects in insects and butterflies and they've also found accumulated mutations over generations so I think that's very very important based on our research and that of others it is now known that animals living under the full range of stresses in nature are far more sensitive to the effects of radiation than was previously believed the biological effects of radiation on marine animals will essentially be the same as they are with humans both would have the same long-term risks, which is a very slight increase in the risk of cancer. That's talking about Fukushima, not a nuclear war. So yeah, this was a totally depressing series, um, but I think it was an important one. Um, figure out what you can plant in your area, depending on the climate being colder, because it's likely to be in the post-apocalyptic period. Store as much uncontaminated soil as you can and uncontaminated water as you can. Use deep wells rather than shallow wells. Think about what you're taking, where you're taking it from, how much accumulation of radiation is in that area where the animal or plant is growing. Make sure that you have a good and functional Geiger counter. And although they're pricey, that's definitely on my list of things that I need to get. Uh, I haven't got one. Fair cop. I kind of probably be able to swipe one from. The hospital but I, I actually would like to have one uh, prior to the move to the Shire I think it's going to be really really useful problem with a lot of gag accounts is they don't really have a good range you actually need to know what you're looking at um, is it actually 20 rads an hour or is it 200 you need to kind of be able to differentiate that in a nuclear war environment so those radiation counters actually need to be stored away from EMP protection because a lot of them use transistors Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the series. Um, I really found it kind of depressing again to revisit this again. But with Russia uh, threatening nuclear war over American attempts to try and block um, what it believes is its legitimate right to protect the massively Russian population of the Crimea, with Israel and Iran glaring at each other, with China getting very, very annoyed at the United States, um, who knows? This is the one scenario you can't really prep for at the time. And skills based isn't really going to help you. Nuclear warfare survival, nuclear warfare prepping, really demands a scientific and knowledge based approach. Having the stuff in a book, but not having read the book apart from once, just glancing at the pictures, isn't enough. You need to know the knowledge so you can actually function safely. Because remember, in SHTF, tomorrow will always be worse than today. Unless you're prepped.
they're very lucky to survive. Or maybe you won't be lucky to survive. Doodles. Generals gathered in their masses Just like witches at black masses Evil minds that plot destruction Sorcerer of death's construction